for today, I have a special guest for you. And she has traveled extensively around the world. And her name is Zakira Shiroz Jafar Dala. And Roshan e Fatima Jafar is going to be interviewing her. Sister Shiroz, and welcome to Zamana TV. Wa alaikum salam, a pleasure to be here. We're delighted to have you. We hear that you've recently gone to Karbala for Chahloum. Would you like to share the experience with us? I would be delighted to. Alhamdulillah, it was one of the most, most precious uh, experiences of my life. And uh, truly, uh, it was a blessing to be able to go to Karbala. Um, and I went on two trips back to back. I, uh, within two weeks, was able to go again for the ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. I went uh, right after Ashura, and then uh, and then was able to go again for uh, for Chahloum. And uh, it was uh, it, it was an amazing experience because I was able to see Karbala when it was uh, a bit quiet right after Ashura, and then see it when when it was Chahloum, when there were so many people there from all over the world. Truly, um, I felt as if the entire land of Karbala was um, alive with the azadari, with the mourning for Imam Hussain alayhi salam and the shuhada of Karbala. And um, if you're if you're a kind of the kind of person who uh, who feels very moved uh, when 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 they're in a procession, for example, or when uh, on the night of Ashura, when you do uh, ibadat with the, with all your uh, with all your community members, that this is a place where for ten days that kind of experience just keeps going and going. There are processions everywhere. There are uh, processions from people from all over the world. And uh, in different styles of azadari that you get to witness, you get to hear different languages, you get to also see the way different people approach Imam Hussain alayhi salam. You, uh, you, you get this uh, amazing opening of your horizons, widening of your horizons. And you get to see that there is no there's no one correct way of uh, of mourning. There's no one correct way of uh, of doing even uh, of expressing love. And Subhanallah, I saw that in in different ways. So it was an eye opener and a, and a very moving experience for me. I also had an amazing uh, sense of the whole land of Karbala shaking. Yeah. It's when, when you know when you're at the mosque, and uh, sometimes when uh, everybody's doing uh, a zadari, and you can feel the walls shaking, the floors shaking. Uh, this is how I felt in Karbala. I felt that the entire land was reverberating with the sounds of people beating their chests, and uh, 24 hours a day, you could hear people reciting Latmiya Noha on the streets, and uh, you could hear people beating their chests and the sounds of people doing zanjir matam. And so what it was doing is that you would be in constant remembrance of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. You couldn't for a minute forget that these were days of mourning. You couldn't forget for a moment that this is what reality is and this is what your focus in life is about and this is what your entire existence should be about. That you should never forget the sacrifice that Imam Hussein alayhi salam and his uh, caravan of, of uh, followers that, that they gave. I um, I would totally recommend that uh, that if you if you make this visit, you would do it in Chehlum, for there is nothing like this experience to see the entire world. It feels like the entire world is beside you, and uh, and to feel one of many is is an is an amazing experience. It's priceless. SubhanAllah, I hear that there are actually an estimated amount of 21 million people. How did it feel to be surrounded by so many just like yourself? Yes, I, I, uh, I, I write a, a blog on, on Facebook and uh, you can find me on, on Facebook when I've written about this. When I had uh, one status, uh, where I, I talked about status update when I talked about the ecstasy of being lost in the crowd in Karbala. Yes, there were a lot of people there. Some estimates said 15 million, but then they, they said it was 21 million. And uh, at first I was apprehensive about, about being there at a time when there would be so many people there. And I was worried about uh, getting smothered or squashed and, and was worried about stampedes. But subhanAllah, I saw people who had brought very small babies. People had brought newborns. 
people had brought entire families. There were seniors with, on wheelchairs. There were people there from every walks of life. There were people who were disabled, and, uh, and, and yet everyone was safe. And, you know, it was as if uh, a small place like Karbala had expanded to take in all the lovers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and, and taken it, uh, us all into, uh, into its arms. I felt the love there. And uh, being lost in a crowd of so many was actually a fantastic experience. For I felt that I'm not alone in my love for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. There was a great validation there to see that so many people love him. And in fact, it was very humbling to realize that my love is is nothing compared to all the, the different ways that these people are showing their love. There were people who had walked all the way from Basra. Um, a lot of us did the walk from Najaf to Karbala. I walked a little bit because uh, I had to be in Karbala to recite Majlis, so I had to be there earlier than the rest of the group. But uh, there were also people who not only walked, but people who crawled all the way from, from, from the outskirts of Iraq all the way to the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Now that is love that you can, uh, that you can only imagine that, you, that anyone could have, but people do. So it was an amazing experience, and I'll tell you uh, that those fears of being squashed were, uh, they, it, it, they were not totally unfounded, but it's true that it was, there, was a lot of, there were a lot of people there. But there was a great respect amongst the people there. Uh, there was, uh, you know, you didn't feel, you felt very safe, even with the men right there beside you. But you also felt that everyone was your brother and sister and that there was great love and that we were all there for one, one purpose. And so in that respect, uh, it, you didn't hate those, th that feeling of being pushed around. And uh, I, I, uh, I, truly, I truly enjoyed every moment, it was so precious. You know, I hear that there's a big concern of security. How safe did you feel in the atmosphere? You know, um, when you're in Karbala, you kind of, uh, you kind of wonder what all those rep news reports were about. Because when you're there, you totally feel, alhamdulillah, very safe. And I know that this is from uh, the, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he puts a sense of um, invincibility, in fact. And you feel totally safe. And because you're there for such a noble deed, so for such a noble task, that you feel uh, that even if, God forbid, something happened, that you would die in this blessed land. You know, there is no fishari kabr in Karbala. And, uh, and to, to, to die in a place like that, to be, to be a shaheed, is actually an honor for a believer. Um, and there were so many uh, military personnel there. There were tanks and there were uh, military tanks and there were a lot of policemen everywhere and we went through multiple checkpoints. Uh, we, were, we went through metal detectors, we went through physical frisking and our bags were looked into. So you, you knew that, alhamdulillah, all, all the efforts were being made to keep you safe. What merits do you think would be associated with such a trip? Oh, that's a great question because, um, you know, we go there to pay our respects. We go there for, uh, to show our love for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And Iraq is, uh, is not really a uh, travel destination for, uh, for sightseeing, really. And those who come there for work-related purposes and those who might even come just because they're visiting friends or family they are, who have family there, even they, even if they are non-Muslims, even if they are non-Shias, they all end up paying a visit at the shrine. For there is no way you can stay away from such a, such a place that beckons to you. And you know, um, we, we visit the graves of our loved ones, don't we? And there are great uh, merits associated with visiting the one, the, the, the Marhumin. And when I, I remember when I was a little girl, we used to go to um, visit the grave of the founder of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who incidentally was a Shia. But we, we, you know, people went there to pay their respects. And this is what it really is, that if you love the Ahlul Bayt, salam, you go there. But even if you don't, the fact that this was a great man, the, and these were great men who gave up their lives for Islam, uh, elevates them in the eyes of the world. These are, these are great men who, are, who serve as an example for all of us. But also as respect, you go to a pious person's grave. You go to the grave of a, of a well-known personality simply to, to, to be part of that experience. Being in Karbala, being in this blessed land, I'm telling you, 
is a, mir is a miracle in itself. People often say, uh, did you see any miracles? Did you pe see people suddenly walking? And you know, unfortunately, we think of miracles as only that. But the, the total miracle of being in Karbala, stepping on that blessed, pure land that Imam Hussein alayhi salam, uh, shed his blood on is, is an incredible experience. It's a miraculous feeling. There's an amazing feeling of peace. Often people say, if my hajat is, is accepted, if my prayers are accepted, then, then maybe I've had a successful trip. But I'll tell you that the, the success of being there, the success of, um, of finding yourself there where so many people really want to be there is, is, is a miracle in itself. And the peace that you feel in your heart when you stand at those majestic doors is actually the answer to all your prayers. For we, we just need strength to make it through the day, don't we? We need strength to make it through our lives. And so um, uh, just being there is, is a fulfillment of, of, uh, of many of our desires. I want to share with you when you're asking me about the merits, uh, this beautiful hadith by uh, Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam. And this is, by, um, uh, this is in, in, in one of the books that everyone should have with them, a guide to, uh, select, uh, to ziyarat and selected supplications. And, Mulana, Dr. Liaqat Ali Takim has translated this book. And in it, the sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam, has been quoted as, as being reciting this, a dua for his Shias, those who visit the grave of uh, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And uh, this is narrated by one of his companions who came in and found and saw Imam was on the prayer mat. And it's a long hadith and there's many duas that Imam recited there. And then he said, O oh Allah, forgive me, my brothers, and those who visit the grave of my father, Al Hussein, and those who spend their wealth and toil their bodies desiring our goodness. And then he says that they've come to make this connection with us, so bless them, O oh Allah. And he says that they've answered our call. They've made our enemies angry by coming here. And they've done this for your pleasure, so reward them with your pleasure, protect them. And he says, leave for them their, in, their, and their families the best of successors, remove evils from them. Look at the duas that we're getting here. And he says, grant them the best that they wish from you. They have preferred us over their children and their families and their close relatives. They've left their homes to come visit us. And he says, so have mercy on the faces um, that the sun has changed. I mean, they have become tanned standing in the sun. Um, and, and on those cheeks that have clung to the grave of, of Abba Abdullah, have mercy on the eyes that have shed their, these tears. Have mercy on the hearts which have wept and burnt for us. And, uh, and I entrust to you those souls and bodies until they drink from the pool on the, of the, on the day of thirst. So subhanAllah. Uh, what an amazing, amazing uh, thing that uh, it merits that we get. And one of the books that one must uh, read is Kamil Ziyarat, which has some incredible hadith that, that uh, one must uh, be, be very familiar with to understand the merits. I brought many books uh, to show you, and inshallah, we'll see them on the screen so that uh, you can have an idea of the kind of books that one should always travel to Ziyarat with. There's uh, travel journals that one must uh, must read and be under understanding, to understand all the places. The uh, This particular green book is an amazing book to have. And uh, I also wanted to show you some of the things that, uh, that, that I, I brought with me from Iraq. So I wanted to uh, show you one of the things that I recommend is uh, to, you, know, you can get these cloths that are sold on the streets of Karbala. And uh, subhanAllah, what I, what I did was I took this and I uh, wiped every place on the zari that I, I visited, on every special place I went to, the walls, on the, on the, on the, gr on the gold grilling. And uh, now I, I bring it back to town and everybody's able to kiss and, and, and be able to do ziyarat as well. One of the uh, wonderful things to have is to have a very small video camera with you. This little video camera I was able to tuck in and, and uh, um, these kind of purses where you just sling them over, the cameras go in there. I had a video recorder as well as a voice recorder to, rec to record the sounds of the Let Me on the streets. One of the things that uh, you can buy in Karbala are CDs of those Arabic Let Me that you hear, uh, like Maulana um, Basim Karbalai. And I wanted to share with you the shopping that one can do. Um, these are little uh, wooden caps that I bought. I bought this for every member of my, my daughter's class. And it says, Yamaz Lun Hussein. And, uh, 
uh, for those who live in the west and the cold areas, these are um, these things you can only buy in Karbala. It says Ya Hussein on it, and uh, it's, it's a scarf. And the Iraqi scarf, um, this is a beautiful thing to not only wear um, as, as a as a show of solidarity with the Iraqi people, but it's great to cover your nose when you're in dusty areas and you cover your head when it's really cold. Amazing things that, uh, that, that, that these, this scarf itself can do. I wanted to share with you this clock that I bought at the shrine of Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam. And uh, this, is, it, this was in, in Samara, and a very dangerous place right now. Well, and, and so it has a picture of, of the shrine when uh, it was destroyed, and, and, and that it is being built right now. It is one of the rare artifacts that you can buy in Karbala that, uh, that have those, those kinds of pictures and, and a memento. Of course, uh, the beautiful uh, rosary, the tasbih that you can buy, the blessed land of Karbala itself with Imam Hussein on it. Every traveler wants to come back with that and to bring a memento of Hazrat Abbas salam, and the flag of Islam. And mashallah, you get these kind of uh, things where already it's already packaged for you. And uh, in, 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 in Najaf, I bought this beautiful uh, the Zulfikar of Imam Ali alayhi salam, as well as uh, necklaces that say uh, Ya Hussein on them. So mashallah, it's been an amazing experience, and I pray that everyone gets an opportunity to go. So I think what everyone's wondering is that you've prepared yourself physically, but then how do you prepare yourself spiritually for such a long journey? Yes, uh, spiritual preparation is absolutely necessary, and that is why many of these books that I've brought are, are worth reading. Books like Tears and Tributes, which, which, uh, which t and the Maktal of Imam Hussain, alayhi salam, they all give you a, a, a wonderful way. And I've also, uh, I also recommend writing a journal when you're over there and uploading your MP3 player with, uh, with Ziarat and with, with Majalises that you can hear because you spend a lot of time on the bus. And, uh, and uh, in that way, you can make the most of every moment when you're over there. Do you have any very memorable, enlightening moments on your trip? Anything well, uh, I, I know that you, ha you yeah. don't have much time, but uh, we'll, we'll end with this. But alhamdulillah, uh, being there is not just about, uh, I realized, that was my enlightening moment, that it was not just about going to the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. It was not just doing the ziyarat and asking for my hajat and taking the duas of the many people who had told me to pray for them, but it was also about realizing that you cannot show love for Imam Hussein alayhi salam without showing a love for all the people who love Imam Hussein alayhi salam as well. Living uh, in close proximity with other, um, with other travelers and other Zaireen was an eye-opener and I realized that one has to tolerate, one has to share, one has to respect and one has to hold hands with all those who love Imam Hussein alayhi salam for a community that is united is, uh, is looked upon with love by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much, Sister Shabazz. That was truly an eye-opener, and I hope we can get to talk to you another time later on. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to coming back.